Hi friends. Well, I finally was able to get my computer going this morning and read some comments and a number of you have been wondering where I was earlier in the week. Let me tell you. We left Rapid City on Tuesday morning, uh, fairly early. Got to uh, Billings, Montana, parked at the Walmart, and it was 75 degrees. Three hours later, it was 40 degrees, and it started snowing in the early evening, and it's been snowing for two days. Uh, we're not running out of groceries because we're at the Walmart. Solar panels don't work when they're covered with snow. AGM batteries don't work as good when they're cold. No problem with the generator. And we left the tire chains back in Rapid City at my brother's house because I'm too old to wrestle chains for these big tires. And our plan was always, hey, if we run into snow, we'll just park it and turn on the diesel furnace, which is exactly what we've done. We've been sitting here for two days. The snow is cleared here in Billings, but uh, according to the uh, Montana Department of Transportation website, there's 400 miles of ice between me and a little warmer weather to the west. So we'll sit here another day. And then I'm sitting here in the snowstorm thinking, well, that's great. I'll just work on my videos. No problem. My internet went down on me. I ran out of gigabytes. And I got that resolved late last night with Verizon. So uh, we're back up and I'll have a video uh, posted tomorrow morning on Friday. But that's what I've been dealing with for a couple of days. I've got some pictures of snow and icicles. It's not terrible. I grew up in South Dakota. This is not a blizzard. It's just snow. But I didn't grow up driving 42,000 pounds of vehicle that I do not want to be anywhere near anything slippery. So we sit until the weather warms up. Hopefully that'll be before we have to go back to Mexico in March. <laughs> ah, let's take a look at uh, some weather that you should not be RVing in. You know, uh, I had a knock on the door yesterday, and it was someone who recognized the motorhome and the car, a, a, a person who watches my videos, a couple actually, and they took me out to dinner. So. Thank you very much, Randy. I, uh, Randy, if you're watching, I almost called you this morning because my door was frozen shut. We couldn't get out. Uh, at first I thought it was the locks, the, you know, the, the deadbolt that was frozen, or perhaps the um, little catches that catch the door at the top and the bottom, but I finally figured out that that wasn't it. It was just frozen solid with ice down at the very bottom and um, maybe it didn't get closed entirely to the seals last night or something but I finally uh, put my little buddy heater down there and let it heat the door for about a half an hour and that seemed to loosen it up a little bit but it still wouldn't open um, I was able to open a window and stick my arm out there far enough to try the latch from the outside and that didn't do any good either. Uh, I was contemplating climbing out of my emergency window but I actually opened it up and got one leg out the window and looked down at the concrete and said, no, I'm nice and warm in here and I don't want to fall out and bust my head if my feet aren't burning. <laughs> so I don't know why they do those. RV emergency windows are dangerous. I mean, you know, getting burned, that's that's bad, but falling out and busting your head? Why couldn't they put a hatch down here lower? I don't, anyway, 
uh, might be one of my pet peeves or one of my greatest fears. Anyway, I finally just sat down there on the steps and kicked the door until it came open. But what I started to say was, Randy, I almost called you and said, hey, could you come and chip the icicles off the outside of my door? Uh, thanks for the offer. I know you'd have come right, as, right away if I'd have called. Anyway, here's some Montana cold weather pictures for you. Please enjoy my stories or whatever else might be on my mind today. How do you like Montana? It's the big suck. <laughs> How do you like my little buddy heater that you're always complaining about? It has its place. <laughs> We had a beautiful travel day on Tuesday, nice and warm, Wyoming, Montana. It looked like we were heading into blue skies. Welcome to Wyoming. Well, I'm trying to see some antelope out here. I saw a herd of about maybe 40 of them. And I was trying to get a picture for you, but I'm driving. Well, like Roger Miller says, oh, you can't go swimming in a watermelon patch. You can't go swimming in a watermelon patch. You can't go swimming in a watermelon patch. But you can be happy if you be mine too. All you gotta do is put your mind to it. Knuckle down, buckle down. Do it, do it, do it. I still don't see any antelope. That what makes you think we're still in Wyoming? What makes me think we're still in Wyoming is this sign up here. That says Old Virginia, Montana? Yeah, that one. Welcome to Montana. Big sky country. Oh. You'd like to go to Acme? Yeah. I don't know, we're right on... There was a cartoon character that 
Acme, yeah. That's where... Yeah, there was a suitcase. He was carrying a suitcase that said Acme Company. Oh, yeah. And it said Acme Company. And they were selling cheap vacuum cleaners and stuff. Well, Acme is where Wiley Coyote shops for all the things that are supposed I, to help him catch the Roadrunner. That's right. It was a cartoon like that. Okay. Well, if I uh, see an exit for Acme, I'll take you there. We'll look for Bugs, Wiley. Bugs Bunny. Bugs Bunny didn't have been. Bugs Bunny. He didn't have got nothing to would, do with it, Bugs Bunny. Would jump into his bunny hole. Until the Acme company came by and sold them something to blow up Elmer Fudd. Did you actually watch cartoons? I don't usually admit it. You didn't really understand them, I can tell you that right now. <laughs> It occurred to me that maybe I could help you out with another one of life's lessons. Have you ever seen a monkey open a banana? Now, I'm sure that you've seen a human open a banana, and what you do is you take it like this, and you maybe you crease it a little bit with your fingernail right there, and then you break that off and peel it down. Let me show you how a monkey opens a banana. We've been doing it wrong our whole lives. Take the other end and peel it. Just that easy. People often ask me, how do you know all these things? Because I know a lot of things. And often I will answer, well, I know a lot of things, but I don't have enough room up there to remember how I learned all of those things. But I do remember how I learned about the banana. My cousin Bob told me about the monkey and the banana. And I don't know if Bob actually saw a monkey do that, or if Bob's just that smart. <laughs> Hi, Bob. Hey, if you like me, give me one of those thumbs up. And please subscribe and hit that little bell so you know when I post next. Please share me with your friends on social media. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed what was on my mind today.